Hello, uh, here we are, Gaston Cruz. I am really happy to be again on another Data Tobogan 2024 edition with my friend Alex Rostan. We are going to be covering a bunch of stuff around Microsoft Fabric, Power Platform, a lot of Copilot, OpenAI, what you can do with this magic mix. So happy to be here in another community engagement. Thanks for the organizers to invite and host us today. Uh, let's start going further on this line. Uh, a little bit about myself, Gaston Cruz here. I'm from Uruguay, South America. I lived in Seattle for the last uh, five years or so. I am MEP in the data platform space uh, for the last uh, seven years. I am part of the advisory board for the Microsoft Fabric Feature Partner Program and be part of the Fabric Engineer Connections. I've been in the space of uh, become a Microsoft certified trainer for the last 15 years with my friend Alex Rosan. We are running a YouTube channel called PowerMates. Uh, I am also a Seattle Power BI user group leader. And as well, uh, I've been speaking in different conferences like Ignite, Build, Power Platform, Business uh, Summit, and Pass Summit as well. Let's switch over to Alex Rostan for his presentation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Data Talk again 2024. My introduction is a little bit shorter than the Gaston one. So I'm uh, MVP in the business application uh, category because we are going to uh, speak today and how to integrate a little bit Power Platform with uh, Fabric and do the magic. So I um, work in Slalom Canada, Toronto as principal. I am the Power Platform at Canada lead in the Microsoft Center of Excellence. I'm also work as a cloud architect. I'm a leader for a couple of user group in LATAM. I'm Ruayan, as Gaston. And as Gaston mentioned before, we have the PowerMate channel. I invite you, if you want to subscribe and see a couple of funny videos, go to the PowerMate channel. So let's continue with the presentation today. Um, we named that presentation, that uh, session today, as Microsoft Fabric plus Power Platform plus Azure OpenAI uh, equal magic in the mix. And that's because we are going to see in our demo uh, how to you can quickly create applications with Copilot, then integrate data with Microsoft Fabric and Azure OpenAI. That's the idea of our presentation today. Before that, we are going to uh, do like a, a little bit of uh, introduction about technologies we are going to be using on our presentation today. So let's start with uh, Azure AI. Uh, what is Azure AI? Maybe most of you already know about uh, Azure AI, but we can uh, say that the Azure AI is like a suite of cloud-based services and tools that uh, developed by Microsoft, of course, that enable us uh, as a developers and, and business people to build and deploy artificial intelligence application on the Microsoft Cloud, Microsoft Azure, of course. So it's provide you know, a, a range of AI services uh, such as uh, speak recognition, image recognition, language understanding. Uh, then we can use, of course, the cognitive services. Uh, so we can integrate with different Azure services. As you can see in the image, we have like uh, split the Azure AI, like applications, application platform, where we have the power platform, a scenario-based uh, services that we have both services, cognitive search, form recognizer, and other services then the customizable AI models, like the cognitive services, vision, speech, language, decision, and others. You can uh, use now the uh, Azure AI Studio, so you can use different services and models. And of course, we have the ML platform, when, of course, it's like you can start from scratch, creating your own Azure machine learning models. Then, uh, of course, I want to separate and uh, elaborate a little bit uh, about 
OpenAI and the Microsoft AI. You know, uh, OpenAI is a organization uh, in artificial intelligence research and development and has collaborated uh, with Microsoft to create the Azure OpenAI. So, of course, when we can, we know now as a Azure OpenAI is like collaboration between uh, Microsoft and the OpenAI. And of course, in the Azure OpenAI, we have a bunch of uh, services, you know, language translator, uh, computer vision, anomaly detector, uh, machine learning services, and so on. That is Azure OpenAI right now. Uh, and then, of course, the Power Platform, because we are going to use some of the Power Platform feature today. So I want to explain maybe there's someone new that say, what, what is Power Platform, Alex? Okay, I came from the Excel side of things. Okay, the Power Platform is like a, a Power Platform combined, you know, the robust of the applications, uh, Power Apps, Power BI, Power Automate, Power Virtualization, now named as a Copilot Studio. Uh, and power pages, of course. So that provide a quickly and easy uh, application building and data insight. So each component of the Microsoft Power Platform is built on top of Dataverse. So we can uh, say that Dataverse is a database for the Power Platform, but it's more than this. I say that Dataverse, it's a collection of services on top of data. That is what I define of Dataverse. And of course, Power Apps provide a rapid local development environment uh, for building custom applications uh, up for bits you need. We are going to uh, be seeing how to work with Power Apps, data and Power Apps. I use Copilot to create some of the Power Apps today and connect with Fab. And the last point I want to talk about the Power Platform, and then I'm going to hand over to Gaston to talk more about Fabric, is the Power Platform Copilot. Uh, the you know uh, Power Platform Copilot is the way you can uh, quickly and easy create application, functional applications, just using natural language. So what we are going to see is how you can quickly create uh, an application, a Power Platform, Power App application, uh, saying I need an application to, I don't know, um, to track task or to manage um, building materials, contraction materials or something like that. You can create application to do whatever you want using just natural language. We are going to see that in a couple of minutes, but just to give you a, a quick overview. So Gaston, please, uh, please uh, introduce us on Fabric and, and what we are going to see today. Yeah, right on, Alex. Uh, um, one of the things that we record with Alex is our solution is a little bit of a mix between what we can bring from the Power Platform, from the business side of things perspective. And now what we are gonna be start discussing is, okay, once we create the solution, what I can do with the data that we are landing from that solution or as an input from the business. So Microsoft uh, in a few last few months uh, introduced uh, Fabric as a unified solution that brings together all the workloads from different uh, streams. So if you are a data engineer, if you are a citizen developer, if you are in the Power BI side of things, Power BI actually is part of Fabric. So one of the workloads that's coming into Fabric is the Power BI, uh, you know, uh, environment. So if you want to land the data, you have Data Factory. If you are playing with notebooks and creating medallion architectures with lake house and building uh, notebooks and transformation and shaping the data, you have in top of that within Fabric, you have the option to create data warehouse on, on, on Fabric. You have the option to create data scientists and call machine learning from, from, from Fabric. You have a whole workload around uh, custo databases and uh, near real-time analytics. And you have a new member of this uh, Fabric family that is data activator. If you want to trigger alerts, monitoring different frameworks and push different notifications out of that, 
you have data activator for that purpose. Let's go with the next one. As you can see, all the workloads are coming together in a one unified solution. Behind the scenes in the backend, every single data that you're landing into Fabric is in one lake, an open format, Delta packet format, everything is landing into the one lake. You can have all data lineage because Purview is part of Fabric, so you can have a whole hub to check all the data lineage on your data. And as well, you have all AI components coming into Fabric. And we record some videos with Alex before in our PowerMates channel mentioning, okay, what is Copilot for Power BI? What is Copilot for Power Query? What is Copilot for Notebooks and the Data Engineer Streams? So AI is pretty much embedded within the Fabric capacity. Great. Thank you, So now uh, going to the funny part of the of the session. Let's head over to the demo. Okay. Let me switch my screen quickly. Okay. 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 Let's let's start over here. Uh, let's access to the Power App homepage, you know, uh, makepowerapp.com. So as you can see here, I am the homepage for the Power App. And so, of course, you can click on create applications, see what is your applications, and create new with different templates. Today, just to see how easy uh, uh, and, and functional is to create an application using Copilot. I am going to use this box here, this text box here, that is the Copilot. So we just need to let the Copilot know what we want to create, and then Copilot is going to create uh, the application for us. As usual, uh, in the meanwhile, I am going to start creating that. You know, I want to, I'm going to create a, a power app uh, with define a new solution. New solution is a power app with the tables. Define a new solution that allow me to provide license for Microsoft 365 in my organization. Microsoft 365 in my organization. Okay. So let's create that. Okay. Uh, and I mean what? Uh, as usual, if you create uh, better prompts uh, and and make the copilot understand better what you need uh, better are going to be the result of your application or more if you are being more specific you are going to get a more specific solution in terms for example here uh, this is the copilot is saying hey alex i understand that you need something for license management and the, he create a uh, account with license id user id license type start date and end of course, if I, for example, start creating the prompt and say I need to create a solution that allow me to provide license for Microsoft 365 in my organization uh, to track different products and different blah, blah. Okay, you are going to be more specific and Copilot going to create a more specific table. For example, if you need to add a column because there's not a column defined for a, a uh, Microsoft 365 product, we can come here to the right side and say, add a column by product name between uh, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, and Team. Next, it, it, this is an example, of course, to play around, but imagine you need to start adding product because your license are by product. Uh, of course, the pain of the license, you have enterprise licenses, you don't need to define the product because the enterprise license has a product inside. But okay, let, it, this is such an example, okay? So let's click here and let's see what happened. Okay, Copilot, understand me that I need to add a column name, product name, and the product should be between PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, Teams, and again, PowerPoint, because I just defined those four. So now, at this time, we are defining the data structure. 
what is the data we are going to be working or handle in our application. So, okay, when you start looking at the tables, and, okay, this that's all I, I need for my application, data, license ID, user's ID, license type, start date, or as I uh, mentioned before, you can start adding columns or edit the columns data types. That's okay too, you can do that. For example, if you are not agree with license type, you can add a prompt and say, okay, change the license type for uh, premium, uh, P2, P3, P4, and not basic standard and premium, you can do that too, okay? So let's create the application. Click here on the bottom, create, and let's see what happens. Here, the Copilot and the Power Apps are creating the application that we design with the data on the, on the table. So that means like uh, Power Apps Copilot is creating a functional application uh, to create those license assignments with that table. It's like a CRUD, you know, it's a create, remove, update, and delete, that, but we can start adding more and more feature to our application. If we need add a logo, if we need like more data, more fields, uh, here there's a pre-built section with a collection, a gallery, but we can define another type of gallery, vertical, horizontal, uh, add a combo box, uh, list box, whatever we need. So as you can see here, the application uh, came with some sample data. We can start editing, adding different component uh, to the different sections of application. But let's see how it works. It, it, that's really functional. This application is really functional right now. Just with two clicks. Yeah, as you can see here, you know, if I, I select the first one, so I can say edit and say, no, the data for that is not uh, 1230, is May. And the end date, of course, should be, I don't know, September. Okay. And product name is not PowerPoint, it's Excel. And but the user ID is okay, the license type is okay. And I just click here and say. And as you can see here, I'm going to change here. If you return here, it's totally functional. We have already the data uh, store in our dataverse table. Uh, uh, our defined columns. And same thing, if we want to add a new one, we can say, okay, start day February 1st, today, end uh, date of this license is August 31st, license ID, I don't know, uh, L3456. The product name is Outlook, the user ID is a U32, final license time is premium. And I click on save here. And as you can see, we have already created the row with the data. Okay, something is missing here. As you can see here, the end date was not set up. Let's try to set here data and save again. And you can see here, we have all the information here. Okay, so at this point, what happened? We uh, start creating a prompt for our Power Automate Copilot, saying what we need. Then we work in the table with data, say, okay, my table is okay, my columns, I need a new column, I need to edit a column, and now we have a functional uh, application. So next step, we're going to see what happened is, okay, let's go over to, again, the Power App homepage. Let's click on tables here. And you can see all the tables you have on your uh, Dataverse environment because uh, uh, the tables on Power Platform were, uh, are for environments. So as you can see here, I have uh, different environments. So for each environment, I have like a, a, a database with different tables. You can see it in that way if you want. So here in the custom, uh, we have the license table. Okay, so the license table has all the information we create for the uh, in our application. 
But before uh, before we leave the power platform and dive into the fabric world, I'm going to see show you how to connect that. So before that, you need to come here and click on link to Microsoft Fabric. And I'm going to leave oh, hand over to Gaston and uh, allow him to show us how that look when you click on link to Microsoft Fabric. So, so yep. please, you can start over there. Yep, that's that's uh, great, uh, Alex. Uh, and actually, just a quick recap on what we've been doing so far. So Alex was explaining, okay, what, what about creating a whole solution to manage all the licensing in Microsoft 365? In this case, we got the solution coming from Alex. He did great job in terms of prompting, getting the prompt and uh, getting all the uh, different stuff in terms of, you know, getting the data landing into the power up side of things. Now, what we are going to be doing is, first of all, as Alex mentioned, if I click the analyze option here, I can link to Microsoft Fabric. So everything that happens in the dataverse side of things, we are connecting uh, the data into the Fabric stream. As you can see, there's a component in terms of connecting with uh, the environment domain and then the connection. So you need the environment domain, you save the connection, and that is going to be linking the environment from Power Apps into the Fabric capacity. Once you have this connection up and running, the next step is going into Microsoft Fabric, as you can see in the top of my screen, app.powerbi.com. Of course, Power BI is one of the components for Fabric. I am landing in the homepage for Microsoft Fabric. Based on my workload or my persona, I can see that there's all the components of my different workloads. If I am doing a new report in Power BI, I'm going to be opening this space. Or if I'm thinking about landing data into uh, one lake, that's going to be, be a data factory and could be a pipeline, could be a data flow. If I want to start triggering alerts, that is data activator as my workload. The Synapse Data Engineer, everything around working with notebooks and landing data and mash up the data and transform the data, cleansing the data. The Synapse Data Scientist that allow me to connect to machine learning algorithm and all the stuff. Data Warehouse, because you can create data warehouse in, in Fabric and the Synapse real-time analytics that allow us to create custom databases and running custom queries against our uh, different streams. So that's a little bit of define the different roles and personas coming into Fabric. And of course, you have in the bottom here on the, my screen, you can switch between workloads uh, from one to the other. In our case, remember, Alex was working with the Power Apps, create a solution, lands data about licensing. I'm going to pick up on Data Factory to start landing the data into my uh, Fabric environment. You have two options. Data Flow Gen 2 or Data Pipeline. In our case, I'm going to switch to the Data Pipeline. I'm going to create a new Data Pipeline. In my case, I'm going to be doing Data Propagand Pipeline. And once I create this pipeline, I'm going to share this pipeline that I already have created here. I'm going to switch to my pipeline environment where I did exactly this, that was just getting this activity that is a copy the data. And we are going to be copying the data from our stream into this canvas. So with this copy data activity, you have the option, as you can see here, I give the name for my uh, activity copy from Dataverse. The source in our case is the connection that I already have with uh, our environment, you can test the connection, but also you can, uh, and let me click on this option to edit this one. So you can see that in the edition of this one, I am going to check how I connect my fabric environment with uh, this, this one. So you can see that there's an environment option here where I am connecting and that option of the environment is connecting via service principle. So I need 
those details from my Power Apps environment. I need the tenant ID, I need the client ID, I need the service principal key to make this connection happen. Once we have this connection, as uh, you can check on this one, I got the entity name. So I am connecting to my license and I can preview the data here so I can get the connections up and running to the dataverse. I can check all that comes from the Power Apps, every single data that is coming from that end, every single data that comes to my Power Apps is here. So I am connecting to that dataverse. And the next thing is you are gonna be landing the data in our case in the destination pane you can see that i am connecting to a workspace here landing the data from my pipeline into a lake house in my case i am picking one of my lake house that i already built before so i am landing the data uh, from the licensing table into this uh, lake house. In my case, the name of the lake house is PowerMates LH and the table name is Licenses. So I am landing the data as a new table in my lake house command. After I am doing this, you know, connecting the dots between the source and the destination and can validate my pipeline, of course. Then after I validate and hit the option of run command here, after I run this command, I can switch stream after the running of this one. After running this one, I can go to my lake house and opening this in my workspace. I can, of course, click on this one and then open the lake house directly looking for the power mates LH. Actually have my tab open here and you can see that I can open this. Remember that the lake house structure allow me to land structured data, but also unstructured data. So you can, in my case, land a new table called licenses. I have all my details coming from the Power Up side of things. If I want to include files, for example, uh, loading a CSV file like me here, it's just a matter of click here, Click the upload, upload files, and you can upload logos, images, videos, whatever you want, because that is kind of the flexibility in the lake house that you can create structured tables or views, but you can also create folders and start uploading JSON file or CSV file or Excel files as unstructured data into your lake house stream. After you create this structure coming into your lake house, of course, you can continue dumping more data or shaping more data. You have the option to create a new notebook to do that and continue with Python script or SQL script, you know, landing more data via notebooks. Or you can also create a new semantic model in top of your lake house data. So you can click here in semantic model. You can, in my case, I'm gonna click on the license option here. Uh, that is one of the options, and I can create a data toboggan semantic model. I click on the option of showing tables, click on the licensing. Uh, you can start, uh, you know, uh, clicking in more than one table. Of course, if you want to build relationships between tables, create your start schema or your snowflake uh, model uh, as your semantic model. So you create the semantic model on top of that. Of course, this is all in the services. I am not installing any kind of additional tools. It's all happening in my browser. In my case, you can check that the license is with some blue colors in the top. If I go to my advanced option up here, when I click on the table, you can see that this is because I have a direct lake connection. So everything that lands in the lake house is going to be propagated automatically to this semantic model. It's going to be linking all the data that lands into the lake house across this semantic model. We can create a new calculation group. You can calculate or create a new measure in top of the semantic model. So if you are bringing more business logic, leveraging DAX, uh, to do that, you can do that. You can create measures in top of your semantic model right away here using the service. And of course, once you define that model, you 
you are able to click on this option here and right away create a new report in Power BI linking to that semantic model. So I got all my data here coming into the license. Uh, way here, I'm going to be uh, taking this approach to see a little bit better my screen. So you can check that I can land any of this data. This is all the data coming from the Power App style thing. So I can pick any of my data, in this case from the license, and start accessing, for example, getting the username and start taking all the data coming from the Power App style thing. So I can start landing data directly from this one and uh, uh, getting all the data as part of my uh, reporting layer. So in my case, I'm just creating a whole new table or creating kind of connections and see all that's coming right away here. And if I want to, let's say, doing kind of a command to check, okay, how many licenses I've been giving so far to this enterprise or this company, I can create a card here and say, hey, I can, uh, instead of the first, let's see, let's do a count of I have five licenses coming into my Power App. So we can start building reports in top of our Lakehouse. Remember that our end-to-end -end solution was, Alex start with the Power Apps, we connect the Power Apps, landing the data via a pipeline with data uh, factory in Fabric, we land the data into the Lakehouse, we create a semantic model in top of the Lakehouse, and then we are creating now a Power BI report, and of course, this is the web service that allow us to include a text box or whatever this is, kind of the whole experience working directly in the service, not, not having any kind of requirements to, uh, to uh, download any application, you know, it's kind of a, that's, that's the, the great way in terms of, you know, building these kind of reports directly in the service without the, the details of having any kind of third parties tools to allow Power BI to connect the dots, create the link into the semantic model, and then that semantic model is connecting, of course, for the, for the lake house. This is a little bit of, end-to-end -end our solution, what we would love to share with all of you. Uh, this is all around a learning process. Of course, it's great to see that you can start connecting the dots between what you can do in Power Platform, that means Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Pages, uh, Power Virtualizations, or Copilot Studio at this point. And you can start connecting the dots between what you can do in Power Platform, but also Microsoft Fabric as a unified solution for everything around data. And this is not only uh, data that you can bring from Power Apps. You can start, of course, combine that data. Let's say that you have a SharePoint site or you have a Snowflake a data warehouse or you have Databricks for mashing up the data. You can combine all of them together and start bringing all the sources together to create this kind of Power BI reports, for example. Yeah, in addition to that, I, I suppose that most of you that are on the other side of the, of the screen are more from the data you know, side of thing, but I want to encourage you that you can start working with this kind of solution with Power App, Power Automate, using Copilot. You don't need to uh, be a, a super user to create those kind of applications to you know solve some uh, quick problem that you have on, on your company that creates something so you can start working with it and then integrate with data so you can uh, get all the data in your world and of course, you are going to be more comfortable showing data in Power BI or, or something else. So, yeah, I want to encourage you that you can start using that Copilot and integrate with other application. And um, that's pretty much it for for our our side. Uh, you can leave your your questions, your comment in the chat, and we will be asking some questions. And thanks again to the organizers. And for, for having us, uh, happy to be here and see you uh, next year. 
Yeah, as always, you can connect with uh, ourselves uh, via LinkedIn, Twitter, or uh, via email. Uh, as Alex mentioned, uh, a pleasure to be in another data toboggan. I hope that in the next version, we are coming with another sessions to share with all of you. Uh, thanks for the organizer. Thanks for the sponsorship of this one. Uh, this is a really great community event. So happy to be here again. And thanks for having us. Bye-bye.